Hello everybody. Happy Monday night. I am back with another craft kit and I thought it would be fun to do like a last minute, well it's not last minute, but um, another fall kit. So I have done a couple of fall things. We've done some Halloween things. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready, to, well, in my mind, I'm kind of like prepping for some Christmas crafts. So I'm trying to like finish up what it is that I'm going to create for the fall crafts and for Halloween crafts. And so I have a few more things lined up for you guys in the fall and Halloween like group um, this week and next week. And I'm hoping I can get to all of them to share with you. Hey, Linda. Let's see. Hey, uh, Cheyenne, is that right? Hi, how are you guys? Um, so I am going to do another craft kit, but this one is fall based, but um, it's kind of like appropriate for October. It doesn't have the word October in it, like my last one, which I actually linked in the description here, the October 31st kit, which is more Halloween based. If you want to see that or check it out, then you can click on the link. So what I'm going to do is um, do another fall craft kit and I actually have um, the kit board here already pre-painted. So this is what the kit boards look like. This is the 12 by 12 size and I went ahead um, just to kind of speed the process along for tonight's live pre-painted the board background. I pre-painted it white and I actually also went ahead and stained all of my wood trim pieces because you guys have seen me do, if you're new to this, you probably haven't seen it, but if you're not new to my page, then you know that when I do the craft kits, I typically paint the background of the wood and stain all of my trim pieces. So if you are new, we have plenty of tutorials that show me doing that step and that part of the process where basically, if you purchase a kit, you get your backer board or your background board and it comes plain like this and we just painted the front and I chose white for tonight's design and then I went ahead and pre-painted the trim pieces that will go around our wood sign. So what I can do now is it's actually had some time to dry about 30 minutes. It's still cool to the touch but for the most part it is dry. Hi Jennifer, how are you? I'm doing good. And so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and lay down our stencil. And this stencil is the All Things Fall stencil, it's what I call it. And it says, every year I fall for pumpkins, bonfires, s'mores, autumn leaves, apples, and you. And so we're gonna create that sign today with all the different um, fall colors. And I've gone ahead, I have my stencil here, so what I'm gonna do is just peel off the backing of my stencil paper, which is what we normally do, especially if you get this kit um, from the shop. It will come with this backing paper that you just need to remove and um, make sure that you get all of it off because you don't want it sticking to your project. And then what is left is the blue stencil completely laid down. And then what you wanna do is press it onto your board and you can use like a spatula or a squeegee thing and kind of just run it over your design, okay? And what you were doing is you were getting the entire stencil to stick and lay down. And so that's what we're doing here, okay? And I'll just go ahead and show you guys what it looks like once you have your stencil laid down on your board. So there's a look at that. And you can kind of see now the design that we're going to create. But it still has this clear like transfer tape on it. So the next part would be to remove that clear transfer part from your design. And this is the part that I say is the absolute hardest because sometimes your stencil doesn't want to stay laid down. It actually wants to come up, or if you pull too fast or too quickly, your design will actually rip and tear, and you definitely don't want that to occur. 
So you've just got to make sure you take your time and you watch very carefully on your stencil, making sure like all the little centers of your letters, like your E's and your O's are all laying down. Um, and that's just to prevent any kind of tearing or misshape happening with your stencil, okay? And one thing that we talked about last week when I did one of these kits was I cut the plastic pieces away as we went and that just kind of helped it from rolling over on my design or relaying itself back down and sticking to my um to my stencil right once we peel it we don't want it to lay back down just so we can peel it back up again so that's one technique um, or one tip rather that i'm going to share with you is just make sure as you work through re revealing your stencil that you um do your best to kind of make sure all the pieces are laying down and then cut away the top transfer as you go now let's see um trying to peel this Does anybody else new come to our page say hello to jean and it looks like linda hello guys welcome if you're new to crafty life mom make sure you sprinkle the video um we sometimes do some giveaways on here and so we always go back and look at all the previous ones to see who shared and is entered we actually have um, a pumpkin necklace that we can do for a giveaway. So make sure that you sprinkle that and then at the end, we go back, we look for the sprinkles and um, contact you for your prize and I just mail it to you completely free. Usually it's giveaways that are like handmade things, made by me, made by yours truly. And so I just like to send them out to those people who come along and join me and craft with me when I go live. So let's see, hi Mary, you're new, welcome. I'm Lane, I'm Crafty Life Mom, and I run craftylifemom.com, and we have a lot of new um, crafting kits in the shop, which are completely DIY. So if you are new and you've never heard of these kits, they're basically kits where you create your own like sign, um, home decor and they're seasonal. So right now we are doing all the fall and Halloween designs. And tonight I have a fall one that I'm sharing with you guys. It will be listed in the shop tomorrow. So you can actually get your hands on this. The kits come with the wood. Um, well actually you can customize how you want your kit. So if you like a particular design, then you can purchase just the stencil. If you have your own surface, and some people do, that they want to put it on. Um, or you can buy the wood, um, background, backer board, whatever you want to call it, and stencil right onto the wood, which is this piece like right here that I'm working on. And you can also add trim to your sign if you want to add trim, which I always like to add the trim. I just like the look that it gives. It's really nice. Um, it just kind of gives it a nice touch. And for some reason, when I stain anything in my home, I kind of use the same color family of stains. And so I like to add the trim because it just keeps it all cohesive with the decor in my home. But you can certainly change it up or even color paint your trim if you want to. You don't even have to do a stain, you can do um, wood. So once we get the stencil laid down on the wood here, okay, and I pre-painted the background before I went live, we will actually paint the stencil design. And I'm gonna show you the technique on how to do that. It's not a big secret and it's very easy. And I also have a little tip here I wanna share with you um, in helping keeping your design from bleeding, like the paint or globbing and getting underneath your stencil because I know that that's a big, Thing that a lot of people have when it comes to making these signs or that's like the fear that they have that they will just mess it up so the longest hardest part is this part that I'm doing right here which is after you've laid down your stencil getting this plastic sheet to come off right because now our stencil is revealed so that was that and I cut it away as I go but that one came off very easy so now we just have the 
stencil and the board actually revealed and we're going to color or paint the parts of the stencil and you're going to see that here in just a minute so the tip or the trick that i have when it comes to preserving the sign and keeping it from having the paint kind of bleed especially when you do multiple colors is to use mod podge so that's a big secret right it's not really but what you want to do is you can take um, a paintbrush, you can take a sponge, you can do whatever. And what I like to do is just kind of glob this. Um, and I, let me just kind of show you here what I'm doing. I'm dipping this into my Mod Podge and I'm just kind of going over this and just kind of globbing it like every other word. And I'll show you why in just a minute. And I know you're thinking, what in the world is she doing? But, so then, once you get the Mod Podge, I'm just taking a tiny little, like, sponge, and I'm running the Mod Podge into every nook and cranny of my stencil. And you may be wondering, why do I do this? And I explain this pretty much every time because it is such an important piece to making your sign have a little bit more professional look. Um, by running the Mod Podge into the crevices of your stencil, it actually creates the first layer to be stenciled, right? So what it's doing is, it's if it's going to bleed, it's going to bleed with the Mod Podge now, which is like a glue consistency that dries clear. So we won't actually even see if any bleeding occurred because if it did, it's clear. Um, so this is just a simple little trick that you can do to kind of fill in and create that first layer barrier for all of your stencils. Um, and this works especially for wood. If you guys have done any wood projects, you know that wood is kind of absorbent and sometimes some pieces are more absorbent than others. And by doing this, you just better your chances of it not bleeding. Now, I don't wanna say it's not gonna bleed at all because if it does bleed on you, you know, if you get a cat, I don't want you to blame me, but this is the uh, technique or the little trick to best keep that from happening. It can still happen and it has for me, so I'm not perfect either. And so I just wanted to share that with you because um, it just really helps it to keep that from happening. And Mod Podge, you guys know, you can let this dry for a few minutes. It dries pretty quickly though, right? Like it'll tell you maybe 15 minutes, I don't know, 30 minutes at most and it'll be ready to go. But it dries very, very quickly. And one thing I like to do to make sure it's kind of an even coat is I just run my finger over it, just kind of filling it in, those last minute little pieces. And basically, also helps by drying by running my finger over it. And I'm just gonna make sure that I got this little area here because I see that um, I probably did, but I couldn't tell. Because the Mod Podge creates like a nice little shine as well. So now you can see, oops, let me turn it around. Our design has this like extra Mod Podge shine to it and it's ready for stenciling. So for this one, like I said, the design is a fall based design. It says every year I fall for pumpkins, bonfires, s'mores, autumn leaves, bonfire wait no autumn leaves apples in you so let's see the first one i think i'm going to stick with my fall tones i'm going to do a red and so to do this technique i've laid out some fall colors here i've laid out an orange a brown a red and a green those are just some nice fall colors i'm dabbing a new sponge this is a new one into my paint and then i'm kind of like dabbing down and away from it and I'm going to just do that same technique right onto my, um, my design, okay? And I'm just going to kind of blot it, kind of like makeup blending. And these are actually makeup uh, sponges that I'm using. So it's the same technique with paint instead of makeup, but I'm just blotting the paint into this stenciled part or the part where I want the color to go, right? And it's best to do two to three even thin small coats of the paint than it is to do 
one big blobby coat, okay? So I'm gonna do red like, hmm, maybe ever so often. Let's see, I'm gonna do it on the word apples for sure because um, apples are red. No um, surprise there, right? So we want that word to kind of stick out as a red word. And let me just kind of show you how I'm doing this. You see, I'm just kind of blotting with my makeup sponge the paint as if I'm putting the makeup on the word, right? Blending it, sort of, if you will. All right, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. And you're gonna notice it's a thin little coat and you're like, well, man, it's not really like laying down. That's okay, let that first layer dry, even if it's kind of see-through or even if your red looks kind of pink, let it dry like that. Move on to another color. So I think for the I fall for, I'm just gonna do in a brown kind of color and I'm going to do the same technique and move across my sign and move down my sign as I do the blotting, okay? So I'm gonna keep working here and I will show you guys some of my progress as we get going. But let me see, you guys have any questions so far about the kit or um, any other things like you wanna know about the fall designs? What would you like to know? I'm an open, but you can ask me anything actually. Go ahead, if you wanna ask me any question, I'll do my best to answer it. I mean, within reason. <laughs> so, hi Ashley, it looks like, um, hi Roberta, hi guys, welcome. We're crafting away. Let me see, I'm gonna do the and sand. I kinda have a little sample that I did over here to the side and I liked the layout of the color, so I am looking at it and just showing that to you as I go. And I'm gonna do the word, I think, s'mores, because you know, the chocolate of the s'more is a brown, so we're gonna do that color brown too. And I'm gonna show you how this color is super light, the first coat of it. And you will see quickly with the second coat, the color just kind of starts to pop into the word there. So don't fret, but you can kind of see how I'm working down my sign with all of my colors. And I'm just leaving my sponges into their um, color. So now I'm just gonna do the orange here. And this is an acrylic paint, it's Apple Barrel. And I believe this color is actually a pumpkin-y orange color. And I'm noticing right here, there's a little bubble in my stencil. So I'm gonna try to smooth that down as much as possible to prevent uh, bleeding or seepage, right? Because I've got two letters real close together there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get the word pumpkins all done. Let's take a look at this. Let me get that going. And looks really good so far. Definitely gonna have to do a second coat on the orange because it's looking a little sherbet -y instead of orange, right? All right, and now I think I'm going to do maybe the word you in orange. What do you guys think? Because um, I'm thinking autumn leaves and bonfire in a green color. And I kind of pre-mixed a couple of green tones together because I had a light green and I had a forest green and I was trying to get a combination of a sagey kind of green, you know, but I guess the forest green would have looked good too. Let me get one more sponge out and let's do the green and I will show you what first coats look like and then we're gonna go ahead and wrap up with the, the second coats really quickly because it doesn't take long to do this, especially on these little signs. They're a perfect size, they're not too big, and um, they actually, you know, have a pretty good size to them so that you can decorate like on a mantle and you can layer them. You can put them with some other pieces that you may have had from the years before, and so I really like 
these little wood signs and they're DIY so kind of have like you know a little bit of pride with it that you made it so all right so here's where I've got so far you see my different little colors my orange is definitely looking sherberty so I'm gonna go back and get a second coat on the orange and then I'm gonna go ahead and get a second coat on my red and my brown maybe even the green too so basically just double tap this all out twice and if you feel the need you could probably do a third coat that's completely up to you um, just make sure you're satisfied with the brightness of the color before you peel the stencil you don't want it um, to turn out too light and say oh I want to do a second color and it's kind of real hard to go back with a brush and fill it in but you could you could go back with a brush and fill it in so that's totally totally up to you all right, so there's the orange. Let's do some more red here. And again, once you get the red going, you just kind of tap it and get in there. And so this doesn't take very long and you kind of want to keep the paint wet because the longer you let the paint stay drying with your stencil, um, it could tear the actual paint, especially if it's like an acrylic or a latex paint. You can see that the the paint will want to lift with it. So make sure um, you try to work a little fast with your coats and you keep the paint wet, okay? So let me show you this. Let me see, I saw some comments. See, Jennifer says, it looks amazing. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, it's kind of fun, you know, because it's, it's easy crafting and it, it yields a really great result, right? It looks, professionally painted yet you made it and so it's it's fun and it's creative and it looks really good so you can even do these for gifts these make great gifts for people um we have some kits that are going to be coming out that are more tuned to just all year instead of just the holidays so if you don't want specifically holidays we're going to have some coming up in the next couple of months where you can get personalized ones. So stay tuned for that because it's gonna be a lot of fun to get those out once we do. It's just, I had so many holiday designs that I was trying to get through. And you know, you know how it is, life flies by and it's hard to get it done, right? <laughs> so, all right, I'm moving pretty quickly on this because I do notice that my paint is starting to do that dry and I want to make sure that when I peel these up, that the color is solid and not tearing in my design. So I'm just working away here, blotting my paint. And I'm gonna show you too, like this one, this brown piece right here, if it's too, too wet, you'll notice it doesn't wanna quite stay. It'll come up with your brush. And that's fine too, but just, you gotta do another coat or something if that happens. You gotta keep it. Now that one I did a little too thick. So I might have a little bleeding there, which is fine. I can always go back with a thin little brush and paint either the white background where it didn't need to go, or I can repaint you know, where it did need to go with the color. So I've done that. I've touched up a couple different signs. So that's very easy to do. And you can just get a simple skinny little paintbrush even from the dollar store for any kind of touch-ups, okay? All right, so I think I'm getting to the very end of the coloring here. So let me show you guys what it looks like once all the color is kind of blotted into place. I have a couple of spots here where the paint just did not want to get into the cracks, so may have some touching up but that's completely normal all right let me see all right so here's what it looks like oh let's do a little bit of orange on that pumpkin's word i really want that to be bright orange not sherbery so all right so here's a look at it all like messy 
And once you're done, you don't even really need to let it dry. We want to peel it while it's still semi-wet. So we just start at a corner and start lifting up. And what you want to do is when you lift, you lift up away from your board, not horizontal with it because you don't want to drag any accidental paint through the background of where it's not supposed to be, right? So you want to keep going and you can kind of hear it's tearing, which is totally fine. Sometimes it helps to just kind of cut it away. Um, if that helps, sometimes not. So just be careful as you lift up, right? You don't want it to smear or bleed if we can help it. And don't really be nervous with it. It's gonna come up and be fine. So it's just a stencil. I always get asked the question too, if these stencils are one time use or if you can use them multiple times. You're seeing me right now just kind of lift this off the board and it's just balling up. It is a sticky type of vinyl like stencil material. So they are one use unfortunately. Um, but if you're looking for you know, multiple use stencils. I know you guys probably are aware there's several companies out there that offer limited designs. These designs are designs that I have found or bought the licensing to and kind of tweaked or made my own. And so these are the ones you can only get from here, but um, you can definitely find similar ones if you're into even creating your own stencils which I hopefully hope to have a tutorial on that too. So, all right, um, let's take a look here. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I've peeled off most of the stencil, but the little insides of the letters of the E's and the O's, you know, they're still kind of in the middle of it. I know I keep doing that noise, <laughs> but it is it's kind of, you know, not that great. So what you need to do is get, um, this one is actually from the Stalls Company. It's one of my favorite vinyl um, heat transfer companies to use stalls. They have a really nice heavy weighted um, tool here that you can use to pick out the little inserts of the A's, like the O's, the R's. You just kind of have to lift them up and off out of your board um, to reveal like the background of your stencil. And so that's just what I'm doing here. I'm using the tool to just kind of lift those up gently and then taking my fingers to peel it up. So I will show you that once I get it all cleaned out. And this is such a cute sign. It's gonna look real adorable with um, some other fall decors. Like I can see even picturing this design like next to a red truck that has pumpkins in it. And you can certainly change these colors up. Like I know a lot of people are really into like a teal truck or even doing like pinks and oranges for fall. And I could totally see doing this design with some pinks, oranges, and maybe even some teals, like a, a whole spin on the fall colors. So it's totally up to you how you do this. Um, the paints, we just use simple acrylic paints, which you can get on your own. They have those um, like at Walmart for 50 cents. And they're super easy, um, you know, to get a variety real quick for just a few bucks. Hey Jenny, hey Jennifer, how are you guys doing? Joining me here, we're finishing up a sign that is for fall. And I'm gonna read it to you guys really quickly while I'm picking out these last few bits. It says, every year I fall for pumpkins, bonfires, s'mores, autumn leaves, apples, and you. And so it's super cute. Cute, cute little phrase um, for a little sign. And let me see, I got one more little piece right there. I think I got everything. I will show you guys what it looks like with the stencil. And I think it turned out really good. There's one little spot in the orange that needs touch up, just like I said, but look at that. Isn't that super cute? I know you guys like it. All right, so let me know what you think about it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead. I remember at the beginning I painted some trim pieces and I'm going to add the trim to the sides here of my sign. So let me just move my little paints here out of the way. And I'm going to, let's see which way. 
which is the best way to add my trim. Here, we'll make sure it's lined up pretty good. All right, yeah, we'll do it like that. And I'm just using, um, I've mentioned this before, I have this um, uh, Ryobi airstrike gun. You can purchase them um, at Home Depot or even on the internet. If you guys want to see a link to that, you can. If you decide to purchase one of these signs and you ask to have the uh, wood trim added on, we can totally pre-drill the holes for you so that you can easily just use a household hammer and nail the trim pieces together. We'll put the holes in there for you so you won't even hardly see them. So let me go ahead and get this on there so I can show you guys what it looks like complete with the trim. Just wanna make sure I have this on correctly and line it up. So, this one turned out really cute guys. I'm really impressed with it. I really like the look of it. And like I said, I could totally see this one in some different colors and different designs and that sort of thing. I, let's see, what is it? I love it. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so let me see here. Let's get this last board on there. Oh, shot that one short. There we go. And one for the side. Let me line it up. All right. Very good. All right. So look at that. Here's a look at it, guys. With the trim, every year I fall for pumpkins, bonfires, s'mores, autumn leaves, and you. <laughs> what do you think? You think this is super cute? Would you put this in your home? Would you do these colors? Or would you, like, change it up and do some different ones? You guys leave a comment down below and let me know and i will get this one listed up in the shop so that you guys can get to happy fall crafting and i have some more um halloween designs coming i have two more for halloween and then after that i think i'm done with the halloween in the fall and i'm going to be excited to kind of move back into christmas we did a whole christmas in july segment with some of these signs but I'm not gonna do just these signs when it comes to Christmas. I have a whole other thing with like Dollar Tree crafts and Christmas crafts and decorating. So I'm gonna start coming out with some of those things as well. And I have a really cool, fun thing. I can't share it just yet, but there is a whole holiday makers event that is going to be coming up and I got asked to be a part of it, which I'm very excited. Um, to share with you guys all the details on that. It's a free event, and so um, I will get you that information hopefully by the end of this week, I think, is when we're allowed to share it. So stay tuned for that, and I will see all of you guys next time. Until then, happy crafting!